Hang on, say, hang on one more time, say that again. We're making paella today, which is a peasant dish that is from the Valencia area of Spain, which is basically Spanish rice. It's basically that. The only thing that I have found that is the difference between Spanish rice and paella is saffron. That's it. So if you don't want to spend the 10 bucks for saffron, you can use, um, you can just make it without it and all will be well. Okay. <laughs> um, paella is based on this pan. That's what this pan is called paella. Um, it's a shallow. It usually doesn't have a cover, but I went to Chinatown and bought a cover for it um, for five bucks. So I put a cover on it, but it's a peasant dish that is made um, in the fields over a fire with whatever they have, an open fire with whatever they have, and it's a noontime dish. Mm. I really like it because it looks super special. I'm turning on one, the flame. It looks super special, but it is super easy. It, and you can actually make it in the kitchen and talking to people while drinking wine. And if you leave out something, uh, no one will know. <laughs> Unless, of course, you leave out the rice, in which case everybody will know. So, uh, Joanne, uh, Joni, and Susan have just arrived. All right. So, I'm going to tell you my version today. Who knows what it will be next week? And you can make it however you want it, obviously. This is another one of those. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> um, I have chicken thighs that were boneless done by the supermarket. And they had a bunch of fat on them. And it's always good to use the fat. So the fat is going into the pan to render out. If you had skin, you would render out the skin. It's great. It's fine. Um, I'm cutting a piece of bacon into I into into pieces and those are going into the pan momentarily. And what else do we start off with? Uh, let's talk a little bit about the meat and the sausage and the seafood. Um, and your hair, your hair looks fabulous. Turn uh, around, turn around. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> Boy, you look so medieval. <laughs> I My friend, uh, Cynthia, did this to me today and I'm so grateful. Now I'm going to cut these chicken pieces into um, pieces about this size, bite size, but big. And they're going into the pan. Now, do you have to use chicken? No, you do not. You can use anything you want. Um, 
Originally, I think it was, uh, what did they say? Um, originally, it was rabbit snails. Snails. Can you think of that anything more disgusting? <laughs> Escargot like is not disgusting. <laughs> if, if, if it's, uh, no, I mean, I wouldn't put it in rice. <laughs> I'm just saying, I would, I like escargot when it's done like in garlic sauce and butter. I'm going to wash my hands. Although I suppose I if you it. put milk, if you saturate them in milk first, they'd be okay in a paella. I'm sure they would. Because it is. I've never had it in a paella, but. It's traditional. Now, yeah. sausage, chorizo. This is Spanish chorizo. I'm just cutting it into pieces and throwing it into the pan. Um. Originally, before I found this in the freezer, I was planning on using Italian sausage. But that gets thrown in to brown. And this is half of a kielbasa. Because, again, it was in the freezer. That's what I've got. I've got kielbasa because that's what I have in the freezer. Yeah, exactly. I'm not, you know... You can use, I would not use breakfast sausage in this. Breakfast sausage would make it taste like breakfast. But other than breakfast paella, unless there's a breakfast paella, as Dina was talking about. Never I don't mind know. her. Never mind, ne just forget her. <laughs> okay, so this is. Hi, Dina. Hello. <laughs> He's sitting at the table. All this is doing is browning. Okay. So now what do we do? We need, now, okay. You can use rabbit. You can use Lamb, I heard about lamb, pieces of lamb. Who knows? Um, there's, you could skip the meat entirely. Uh, this is whatever workmen have in the fields or maybe on the dock if they're, they're, they're uh, fishermen. This can be all fish. It can be all whatever. It doesn't matter. And while that's doing its thing, I'm going to chop the onion. Onion is something that I have never found a recipe without it. So I'm assuming that onion is an essential ingredient. And I know Carrie was looking really very sad when I first, first uh, saw her today and she had just chopped onions. <laughs> and she was like, no. I do not, I just, I, I have issues with onions. <laughs> oh, I have to tell you, ladies. I um, so I used my crack. I have leftover crack chicken sauce, and it was just in the fridge. And I was making dinner two nights ago, and or yesterday. And um, so I threw chicken in the crock pot. I threw the crack chicken sauce in there, and I added red sauce to it. I made it kind of pink and just let it 
bubble and simmer. And then I threw some more spinach in there and let that wilt. And it was fabulous. Oh, that sounds good. It was really, really good. Okay, so one of the things that you need to do about now is to get your saffron and some hot water, which is now in the microwave. So I'll be right with you in a second. Ooh, ouch, that's hot. Okay, and then you put the saffron into the hot water. Now you're going to add all of this, but you're going to let it, I don't know, bloom or something. You'll, you'll add that in a few minutes. Um, and None of that meat has to be completely done because it is going to cook in the rice while the rice is cooking. So you, you, it doesn't have to be complete, completely cooked through, but it helps to have a little bit of browning. Are you turning it down, Kate? Um, oh, I guess you can. And did you throw your onions in already or no? No, no. This is all, I'm just taking it out of the pan. I'm going to be cutting up some other stuff. That's why I'm not moving it over. Okay, so you're taking the meat out of the pan. I'm taking the meat. Once it's brown, you know, it doesn't have to be brown on all sides. It doesn't have to be exciting or perfect. Nothing has to be perfect. And then throw in the onions. If it looks kind of dry in the pan, Throw in a little bit of olive oil. And what you're doing is cooking this until it's a little soft. It'll only be a couple of minutes. So it's about medium heat. Okay, so I'm going to cut up the Peppers. I've I've got some uh, garlic, cloves of garlic. There we go. And this is all, you know, if you don't have a green pepper, don't add it. Um, it's all about what's in the fridge. Um, I forgot to include something like you might want to use green beans in it because that's very traditional. You could put a can of um, garbanzos in that if you're, you're without meat, you could put the garbanzos in and it would be a complete protein. Um, it all depends on what you want and what you've got in the fridge and all of that. Okay, Kate, real quick. Did you put the saffron in the water already? No, I put the saffron in the water. All right, and how much water are we talking? A eh, quarter of a cup to a half a cup. Okay. Not much. You don't have to make it much. Gotcha. And I like red pepper in it just because it looks purdy. Now, 
Now, you know, I haven't been working any more than about 10 minutes. This is, and it looks already, it looks very spectacular. I like the idea of doing something that looks spectacular for very little effort. That's just me. It is definitely not just you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you told somebody that you were having paella for dinner that night, they'd go, ooh, <laughs> ooh, and you'd go, oh, yes, isn't that wonderful? It makes a good family recipe. I made it with my cousin and his wife, and everybody got into making pieces of it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You can get you can get people. Um, I'm just adding now the peppers. Sorry, I, you can get people. You chop the peppers. You chop the onions. You whatever, whatever. I'm gonna throw in the garlic. And now I'm gonna cut up the mushrooms. This is definitely not something you have to have in the paella. Mushrooms are just, I already wiped these off, so it isn't like. And I'm making mine a little smaller because what I find is when we do these dinners, I end up with like huge, huge amounts of foods and food and there's just the two of us. So. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm doing, I basically cut Carrie, her. Carrie, all you have to do is throw it in the calzone the next day. There we go. <laughs> this would be good throw in calzone. Puff pastry. Like, as a puff pastry. Hey. Hand pie with puff pastry. Yes. So we got. Almost finished. And in the freezer, here we go, there it goes. In the freezer, I found little peppers that I had frozen. I'd taken off the bush and frozen. So I'm gonna throw that in, what the hell? <laughs> Why not? What the hell, Kate? <laughs> it, you know, I'm. It's not part of the recipe, but what? What the hell? Why not? Oh. So you are now done as far as you know, really having uh, any more chopping to do, other than. I am going to throw in, I found some semi-dead tomatoes in my refrigerator today. And so in addition to the can of tomatoes that I'm going to add in a few minutes, I'm going to cut these up. So I might as well do that right now. I mean, they're, they're not lovely, but they're not rotten either. And they can be used um, they'll, they'll turn into mush and it'll be mighty fine. It'll be just fine. So I'm not putting those in yet. Let's see what if, let's talk about the spices. Susan Courtright is calling me. Oh. But I can't hear. She dropped uh, off. It dropped out. Call her, would you? Mm -hmm. Call her, Susan Courtright. I don't know what happened to Susan. Everything is wet. 
I don't know what happened to Susan, but she'll be fine. Okay, so this is just, and I'm going, oh, spices. Smoked paprika, regular paprika. Uh, Italian seasoning, crushed pepper, um, herbs to Provence. All of that will work and all of it will be fine. Um, salt and pepper, obviously. Um, and, but that, that's, that's what I'm going to add as soon as I get this together and I'm moving this over making everybody seasick. <laughs> That's what it looks like right now. And it smells amazing because what's not to like with garlic, onion, and veggie. <laughs> and then arborio rice. I'm going to do, now, I'm doing almost two cups, but you can, if you have a lot of people, I do two and a half cups. This is not quite two cups. This is one and a half cups, whatever. It's all about, you know, if you need it, you can. What you're doing is kind of toasting the rice a little bit, not much, but you're doing, you're making it like pilaf. You're toasting it. And then I'm going to add my spices now. And again, these spices are all, you know, like, do we do it? How much do we do? As much as you feel like. Um, some salt. Some pepper. Herbs de Provence. I'd probably put in some fresh thyme and fresh um, mush, um, uh, rosemary too, but. I didn't get out there. Uh, Italian herbs are just fine. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And I'm going to add tomatoes that I cut up. the tomato from a can. The saffron water. And this is my stock. And you could use plain water you can use chicken stock. In this case, I just shrimp, I um, took the, the shells off of the shrimp and boiled it with water for about 10 minutes and made a shrimp stock. You boiled the shells? Just the shells. Okay. Just the shells. And All right. <laughs> just for a little while, okay? And then you've 
you've got it. You that was about two and a half cups of liquid. Um, where is it? Where is it? Oh, hello. It would be helpful if we put the meat in there. And I'm turning the heat up to bring it to a boil. Now already it looks really pretty. I mean, if you were served this, it would be, you, you know, you'd be kind of, it would be good. Yeah. So there you go. Now we haven't done anything with the shrimp yet, right? No, not at all. Or the frozen peas, which I'm going to add. You know, it's, you don't do anything with it until kind of the last minute. So have we got everything in there so far? Yes, I, I cleared the deck. Oh, I'm going to put a couple of, of pepper flakes in because I like it a little bit spicy, even though I did add the pepper and then the chorizo is spicy as well. So I'm bringing it to a boil. Now, traditionally, this would be this would be over a, an open fire and would just cook until the rice was done. That would be traditional. But I don't like that because I can put a lid on it. Here's my $5 lid from Chinatown. <laughs> and it fits on this. And what I'm gonna do is when this comes up to a boil, I'm gonna put the lid on and then cook it for about 10, 15 minutes. Then I'm gonna put the, the shrimp on top. Yeah, about 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna put the shrimp and the peas on top. Now, if you were doing asparagus, you know, chopped up asparagus, you could do that. All of that is going on. Um, and in about 10 minutes. Now, by the time this is all done, the chicken will be done. Now that's, and so would the sausage. The sausage would be finished as well. So, Coming up to a boil, even as we speak, and here it goes. And so I'm gonna put this back. God bless you, Dina. And now it is time for the cook to have a glass of wine. And to clear the decks, maybe. Everybody's quiet over there. <laughs> Let me throw this in. Now, I'm going to turn, make sure that once it's going, you turn it down so that it doesn't burn on the bottom. It's okay for this to have like a brownish layer on the bottom of the pan because it's quite delicious. And that's kind of traditional. It's sort of like the Armenian sofrio or something like that. But um, I'm gonna go get the shrimp so I'll be ready. So I have frozen shrimp from Trader Joe's. And so there you have it. I mean, you basically got it done except for um, adding the shrimp, adding any garnishes that you may want. 
And now, if you were not using shrimp, if you wanted to use white fish, if you wanted to use clams or mussels, or uh, if you were very shishi, lobster tails or uh, crab, you could do any of that. Any of that would work. So um, the, the thing about it is that since anything can go in the rice or nothing can go in the rice, you're, you're, it's a blank slate. You can do whatever you want and whatever floats your boat. So, so if I have like frozen broccoli. Oh I yeah, for yeah. sure. Throw it in there. <laughs> if you have frozen green beans or fresh green beans, throw it in. Uh, anything you want. Uh, uh, I don't think I would put I would put squash, well, I would put zucchini in there, but I don't know whether I'd put winter squash in there, but also you can put canned beans in there too. If you have white beans and you want, and, you know, or green beans or, you know, any kind of vegetable that you have on hand, what, what makes it kind of really special is number one, the rice, and number two, having more than one thing in there. You know, if I've made it with just sausage and chicken uh, without the seafood. Hi, you're back. I'm having severe internet issues yesterday and today. Oh dear. Spectrum is upgrading. Oh, <laughs> I I tried to get your your to answer your phone, but it had gotten wet and I couldn't move it. Oh, I was telling you that it it's not about you guys. It was it's this darn internet. I thought it'd be okay tonight, but not yet. So if I disappear again, that's what it is. You disappear, magic. it's magic. Yeah, magic. Yeah. And shush, Dina. Shush. Dina was being herself. <laughs> Dina, are you? You know who I wanted to disappear. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so I'll bet uh, it's already in the oven, huh? No, it's already still on the on the stove, okay. but it's done. And the, and we're all sitting around having a glass of wine. Now I'm you can, having a liter of Pellegrino. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been one of those days, ladies. It you can add wine to that. If that's something you want to you want to. I just didn't remember. I'm so, allergic. Remember? I know. I know. Yeah. That's why it wasn't included in the recipe. But again, ladies, it's one of those things. It's whatever you want to do. Your main ingredients are rice and vegetables. Certainly onions and garlic. That's it. Anything else you add is gravy did you put shrimp in with the chicken not yet it's yeah, but i mean you're going to i'm going to yeah. here's the shrimp i the love that combination yeah but i i made it for myself one time with with clams because i love oh and clams yeah i love clams and mussels in the winter Mussels uh, are for me. I love mussels. I do too. I like making the mussel with uh, white wine and mm. onions and shallots. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. and, and, and French onions. bread to dip it in. Oh. <laughs> now, Heaven on earth. 
this I'm going to serve with French bread, you know, French bread. And if I were a good person, which I'm not, uh, I'm, I would make a flan, but I'm thinking that maybe I'll make flan next week. Oh, well, that would be good. I, see, I think flan would go really well with this. Yeah. You know, I, you'd have cheeses to start out with and bread and crackers and our usual, right, Carrie? And then um, the paella and then a flan for dessert. I mean, Yum. this would be a really spectacular meal that Yum. would be very easy because the flan would have been made yesterday. You wouldn't make it today. It would have been made yesterday and it's safe in the refrigerator just waiting for you, you know? And then, um, and, and a cheese platter is nothing. You just make it. After this, you saw how hard it was, you know? It's really it not that hard. Matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't now, matter. It doesn't matter. But now that I understand, like the thing is the first time we do these things, you know, I go all out and buy all this stuff. But like now I'm like, oh, well, I can do this any day of the week. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. I would probably not put in the expensive ingredient. Right. I pay, you, ladies, I paid $20 for my thing of saffron. <laughs> Because yeah. it's the only one they had at Stupid Stater Brothers. <laughs> Carrie, it go Carrie, it goes with my Stater Brothers $20 vanilla bean. Exactly. They had one of those, too. I was just thinking about that vanilla bean. <laughs> I know. Now she's got $20 saffron. I've got $20 saffron. <laughs> but you cannot get it at Trader Joe's. This is Trader Joe's stuff. I get mine at Trader Joe's, too. Okay, the, the bell just went off. So what I'm going to do, the shrimp and the frozen peas are going in now. I have three minutes. Okay. I didn't take the lid off very far. And, and then you're just cooking the shrimp until they're done. So it's still boiling. It's still going away, going along. Now, and that, that will be for another 10 minutes. Now, it may be that the rice is not completely done. In which case, you turn it all the way off if it, after 10 minutes, if it's, you turn it all the way off, no flame, and keep it covered for another 10 minutes, rice will be done. So you've got, and people are busy drinking their wine, eating their cheese and crackers, and you, you're sitting there looking like you are you know, wonderful. Like you worked all day. Oh, oh, I oh. all day, oh. all day long. Now, realize that this really does take less than an hour. Less than an hour to make. And if you've got stuff prepared ahead of time, you can get it put to a down. If you wanted to make this ahead of time, I would make it up to the point of adding the shrimp and the Ooh. and then add those right before I'm ready to serve it about 10 minutes in. And that way it it you know you, you're not overcooking the shrimp. But you know, what, who's Sean? Oh, it's Sean. It's not me. 
So anyway, there you go. Uh, I'm going to, it's only about five minutes away and I will show you how gorgeous it looks, but it's, it's like one of those things that is like super magic. It is. You know, it's, I like it because it's one, one bowl, one thing. Okay, so what's up with Sean? He just called to say hey. Oh, okay. I'll come back later. Okay. <laughs> My son has a magic way of calling in the middle of everything. <laughs> so, ladies, how are you this week? No answer. No answer. The same. <laughs> I had the best birthday. Great. Uh, Barry, thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Barry was, um, Barry was here for her birthday and she got salmon and pilaf and broccolini and, okay, creme brulee. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> So good. So Kate, do you have a blowtorch? I got one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I filmed it. Oh my gosh. I filmed it when she was making it. It was so good. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. The baby blowtorch. <laughs> Just in time. I love it. Yeah. Too bad. Diana and I were getting <laughs> I, she told me. Anyway, I got the blowtorch, and I made the clapping, and the, and it was, and it was lovely. It was really lovely. I couldn't believe it. Uh, so maybe Juan and creme brulee next week. Yes, I, <laughs> I guess I could. We could. I love flan too, just saying. I love them both so much. Yeah. <laughs> the flan is more, uh, well, creme brulee is really, you know, it's, it's, I've got 11 yolks, you know, and cream, it's very luxurious, and it doesn't stand up at all. It, it, it has to stay in the little containers. Um, really amazing stuff, though, because it was like super creamy and lovely, wasn't it, Barry? So good. That's all I could say. I had two. Yeah. <laughs> because it was your birthday. It was my birthday, and I could. <laughs> right. Okay, so it's almost time to look at <clears throat> Kate muted herself. I love the colors. Yeah. You're muted. Can I unmute her? Bon appetit. Sorry, I'm muted. Okay. I love these colors. And it's, it looks like Christmas. It looks, I don't know. Now, the rice is almost done. I think that from now until the time that it's ready to go, I'm just going to keep it uncovered and there you go. So that's paella and I hope that you guys will try it because it's super easy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it, I hope you guys will try it. Okay. 
Keep your eating. And mine seems a little saucy. I added a little too much liquid, I think. Well, then uncover it. Okay. Uncover it. That's fine. Okay. It'll be fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And then and, and you can push up the flame just a little bit, and then it will it will do fine. Okay. My, my sauciness over here. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. It is very pretty. It's just a little saucy. Well, <laughs> turn up the flame just a little bit. Okay. Not a bit. No. And then let it go for another 10, 15 minutes. Okay. And the rice will absorb a lot of that. It will go off into the air and make your kitchen smell wonderful and all will be well. <laughs> all will be well. All will be well. So. Or I've had that happen before where I just stand if it really is too saucy, just scoop some of it off and use it in a crock pot dish to, or something, you know, keep the, just throw it in. Exactly. Or say, oops, it's paella soup. <laughs> yeah, I would do that. I would make a soup out of it. You know, it's, a, a, first of all, it's going to taste wonderful. Right, that's what I'm thinking. It would be delicious no matter. No matter what. Yum. So it, whatever you do with it, as long as the rice is cooked, and you've got to make sure that the rice is cooked, the chicken, you know it's going to be cooked. So, uh, and then the shrimp, of course, is cooked already. So you're, you're set. You don't have to worry about it at all. And um, so there you have it. There you go. Beautiful thing. <laughs> so glad you joined us. This, we were here this week. This has been the craziest week as far as news goes. Oh. Mm. <laughs> well, and then I got to tell you guys, you know, my little babies, my little Armenian babies are just devastated right now. They believe that, I mean, I, I talked to a student today who lost a brother um, uh, last week. And his father is on his way to Armenia to fight. Oh. And God, oh my God. And you just pair this with everything else that's going on in the world. And I got to tell you, like the Glendale community is reeling right now. It's, it's tough. I'm so sorry. Would you give my love to those kids? I will. Uh, they, they I, I've had two students lose brothers um, in the last week. And uh, like, what do you even say? I, what do you even do? I, and one of them seems to be sort of handling it. And one of them is not at all. And it's just, these poor babies. How old are they? Uh, well, high school. You know. oh. And uh, and the, the kids who are dying in Armenia are, are 18 to 20. Oh. They, uh, they drop them into the army when they're 17. Right. And so, you know, I have kids, I have boys especially who are feeling very guilty that they're not there that they're not able to be drafted and fight for their country, but also thankful that they're here. You know what I mean? They're just, they're really struggling for me. Uh, I heard guilt. Yeah. Oh. God. I, I the whole generation then. Yeah. Uh, so? uh, it's just so bad. I'm, yeah, I'm very sad about it. 
just it's just too much for one year. Come on. Like <laughs> honestly, in 2020 quit it already. Like I all done with it. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. And we've got a quarter left to go. I was gonna say we got a quarter left. I'm just so done with this year. I'm so done with feeling sad. I'm so yeah, done with feeling upset. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, love you guys. I think this is the least amount of dishes I've ever used in one of your recipes. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm going to clean up my kitchen now. And love I, you. Thank you. Everybody oh take God. care. Yes. And yes. Carrie yes. will keep yes. all those kids in our our thoughts and prayers. Please. They need them. Vote, 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 vote. And vote. <laughs> yes. I got to do that tonight. <laughs> as soon as your ballot comes. I think mine should be in the mail tonight or tomorrow. Okay. I, got, I got mine, so I just got to and, and happy birthday again. Happy Thank birthday, you. Barry. Thank you. My ballot is in Santa Cruz, and I'm going there this weekend. So, I'm oh. <laughs> nice. all right. Bye. 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 Thanks again.